Hello, Internet, and welcome back to my Sky Island playthrough. Now, in the last episode, pretty much the entirety of that video was traveling to and interacting with the Exodii. So we found the location, we went upstairs, and for some reason there was acid all over the hallway. And once that cleared, we were able to go in and talk to Rubik. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to become a cyborg anytime soon, so we mostly just sifted through their inventory and saw if there was anything to pick up. And we did grab a few things namely a fancy spear that I think will serve us very well in the future as well as a pair of armored leggings. I still struggle to read some of these armor menu displays so I'm not sure how good they actually are but they're definitely an improvement over what we had previously. And after that great deal of inventory management we are now back in the game. Hello everyone welcome back to the series. Yeah so I was thinking about the spear off camera. Uh, none of those videos have gone up yet so I'm not sure people might be mad about how I traded with Rubik I'm not a hundred percent. I also noticed when I was editing those videos I called Rubik a he like a thousand times. I know I, I'm so bad about that. They are a they. I don't know why that's so hard for my brain to work with. But anyway we got this spear. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. It seemed really good to me so I thought we should have this for the future especially as we raise our piercing skill and we start to be able to hit more consistently these DPS numbers will go up. And then other than that I mean and it's a reach weapon which is is like obviously it's the main draw of any reach weapon is the fact that you can kite with them and then for the leggings it's it's kind of like I said I, I still struggle to read these displays because it says total coverage 76% which I thought was what mattered but then down here we see the 95% default the 90 ranged and 100% vitals so I'm not a hundred percent I'm pretty sure the total coverage is what we're looking for here 76% covered of the legs so that's not optimal obviously people always talk about wanting 100% on any given armor piece being the most optimal thing. Obviously, you know, 25% chance to just hit our naked legs is not great, but uh, they're still very good protection, so I, I feel pretty okay about what we purchased, but I think people are gonna <laughs> have some opinions about that. Now, the other thing I was thinking about is that I said I would rather take the spear than the cardboard boxes, but I bet you we could probably fit the spear in the cardboard box, would be my guess, because remember, we looked at these and they were like 50 liters these uh medium cardboard boxes they occupy 50 liters where's the pocket data wait you can fold the cardboard boxes oh my god how did i not know this so if i apply <laughs> oh my god people i bet people were screaming that in the comments you can't activate it so how do i fold does not fit so it's not the that it has stuff in it it's that our hands are full so we can't pick it up to activate it so let's try this again Activate cardboard box. Activate, uh, oh, because the other one's in our hands. So how big is the folded cardboard box? Still six liters, which is pretty big. I don't know if we could fit that in our bag. I mean, obviously, currently our bag is just absolutely jam-packed with crap. But uh, I really wish you could stack these so I could carry multiples back. But anyway, my thought, sorry, I didn't know this was possible. So that's like good to know that we can fold these at least. So if we drop the folded cardboard box, activate the other one. So there's just no way to stack them, huh? Two folded cardboard boxes does not fit in any pocket. Can I wield both of them? No, you can only wield one. So obviously we're going to take the, the Dory spear with us. But anyway, my thinking was that these were like 50 liters when they were unpacked, if I remember right, or 25 maybe, I don't remember. But then the large ones that we saw previously will be even bigger. So maybe we can actually fit the Dory spear in that cardboard box and carry it in our hands. And it's even possible we might be able to take additional things with us in that cardboard box if we wield it so that's my thinking for now i did not know you could fold those things i wish we had known that two episodes ago uh because i'm pretty sure people are going to have some things to say about that anyway i'm always worried people will be mad at me uh because uh, like we talked about in the previous episode people kind of regard you like, so when I watch YouTube content, especially for Cataclysm, there's like two versions of people. There are the people who super know what they're doing and are like crazy min-maxers who really know the ins and outs of the game, things like that. And then there are people who are brand new who have no idea what they're doing. And I am generally regarded as one of those people who does know what they're doing. And so when I have a kind of a gaffe like that, Man, if we kill this frog, we're gonna like instantly pulp it. I don't know if pulped corpses count for our, uh, oh, and our we're wearing a backpack, which is gonna be very large and encumbering. 
I don't know if this pulped corpse will count for our corpse requirement. Yeah, you're a tiny frog, so you're very hard to hit, but every miss contributes to our piercing skill, right? We're out of stam. You know what? Just not worry about it. Just give me my backpack and let's get out of here. Wear the backpack and then let's go retrieve our tractor. And we have three warp pulses left, so I think when we go to do the mission to kill the warp draining horde, I believe you get an additional tick on your expedition timer as well when you do that. So my thinking currently is that we'll drive over there and maybe we can hit them with the tractor. Uh, tractors are not gonna be super resilient and we tried to hit a turkey previously. Let's just hit this frog and see about the corpse here. But I think we were going too slow. Oh, we destroyed the leopard okay sorry frog yeah who would have thought a tractor running over a frog would completely destroy all right yeah who would have guessed probably should have seen that coming so let's head over to this horde we'll try to hit them with the tractor i don't know if that'll actually really help us very much why don't we swing by the apple orchard because someone had said like hey there is actual value there so i thought we would check it out if we had time some cattle dogs lemmings american toads so more frogs I really thought they said there was a solar panel. I don't know if there's like a farmhouse around here or something. Cattle dog leaps. What is the cattle dog attacking? Maybe the lemming? I'm not sure. We try hitting the lemming as well. See if that, uh... oh, hello, wasp queen. Yeah, it's going to be a hard pass for me, dog. We're going to turn around and get away from this immediately. So, not dealing with wasps. They're pretty fast, they're very dangerous, and we really don't want to deal with a wasp, is my opinion. Wasp Queen in particular seems pretty dangerous, and if she starts... Uh, it looks like their vision radius is not insane, which is good, so not super concerned. We did see that horde. We're very far north compared to where we were previously. What is this O over here? It's a silo. Fantastic. Not gonna do anything for us. Planner tractor destroys a newspaper, that makes sense. <sighs> Man, this whole day has slipped away from me as well. I have no idea what I was just talking about. Uh, so we're just gonna pretend I you know, wasn't talking about anything, as I often do. It's not something I notice until I'm in editing where I start talking about something and then get immediately distracted and then forget what I was talking about. That's pretty much just uh, pretty much a constant in my recording. Sorry about that. It's 6 p.m. already. It's a Sunday afternoon. I just uh, had the day sort of slip by. I don't know where the time went. I am waiting on a text from a pretty girl that I've been talking to, or pretty woman, I should say. You know, as I've gotten older, people correct me more because I, I still say like, like in many contexts, I will say girls and boys like because everyone says girlfriend and boyfriend right so it's like a very natural thing to be like oh yeah i'm talking to a girl or whatever and then people are like don't you mean a woman and i'm like yeah i do sorry about that whatever or a lot of times i'll say, say the same thing about guys i'll be like oh yeah I'm talking to a boy i don't know and people are like you mean a man and i'm like yes why would i not i just that's how i just talk sometimes i don't know Zombie soldier, we're down to two warp pulses. Um, where are you, zombie soldier? If I could like clip you on the way through. Oh, it's a barricade. Oh, I really don't want to deal with a barricade. We'll drive by because there might be guns laying on the ground. But if we see like a turret or anything, do they always have turrets? I don't think they do anymore. All this corpse has is clothing. That's why I slowed down to stop. Let's slowly approach the barricade and see what we have down there they are again migrating so i'm not really concerned oh it looks like it's road work not like a proper barricade what is this it's a road roller yeah so this is just road work that happened to have a zombie soldier at it and it looks like the soldier kind of moved off towards this forested area I mean, we would love more ammo for our rifle would be fantastic, but I mean, if we could drive by and hit it on the way through would be great. And if not, we will just pivot. Road rollers are like super destructive as well. Aren't they like incredibly damaging if you run something over with them? Oh, it looks like it's in basically perfect condition as well. Although we don't know the state of like the the vehicle tanks and stuff. I mean, if we could grab a road, road roller, maybe pop this crate. I don't think, are these mountable terrain? They are, so the zombies would just climb over that without any kind of being slowed down or anything. Well, let's swing down to the road roller, see what kind of condition it's in. 
And these are the big zombies, so they're not uh, particularly fast. So we should be able to just pop out here, take a look at the road roller. So it has uh, an engine that's not faulty, it has diesel, it has a car battery. Uh, let's check the controls. I think I saw them already and it was fine. Has enough wheels, everything's in good condition, so good condition, so this should be pretty drivable. I don't know, do I still have a hammer in my inventory so I could pop the crate? I do, but I'm not sure how long it takes to pop a crate, so let's try the road roller here. That would be the text from the pretty girl, I guess. Uh, let me have a look at this. No offense, talking to a, a pretty woman is like uh, a little bit more important than talking to you, internet. It's very rare that I talk to people uh, in my my day-to-day -day life. As many of you know, I'm not exactly a super social person. How fast can this road roller go? Weight of the road roller destroys the rock. So I want to run people over in this because I don't think I've ever done that. So let's do this and see, like, people talk all the time about how incredible the rollers are but it looks like it's about on par with hitting something with any given vehicle so i don't know maybe they're super durable maybe it's just like they get a buff to damage i don't know oh get out of here i can't keep it on the front i am going like four miles an hour as well which is not optimal so let's back up are you a feral no, you're a, just a regular zombie. Let's get some actual speed here. Looks like it only goes like 13 miles an hour. But we just might... Oh no, it's, it's zipping around pretty good. Okay. That's one. I hate doing this because it's like so tedious to just back up and go forward and back up and go forward. All right, so I'm going to assume that we destroyed a ton of their loot by doing this. But let's pop out here. Why is the headlights on? Turn off headlights. I just... I don't know why those are on. Okay. Stop driving. Yeah, I don't talk to many people in my day-to-day -day life, so just having anyone take an interest in me at all in any capacity, even just as, like, friendship is pretty meaningful to me. So, you know, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Always. And plus, when they're, like, a, a very attractive person, it makes you feel... Like, listen, people can befriend and date each other regardless of a person's appearance, but there's something special when, like, a super attractive person is like, yeah, I would choose to spend my time talking with you. It just means a little bit more you know i don't know is that weird i don't think that's weird i feel like if you're more attractive people treat you better and then when you treat people better it means more to them than someone else if that makes sense it's it sounds terrible saying it out loud but i'm pretty sure that's it's just how the world is. Anyway, this photograph gets us back to the game. Frost dusted pastures and the fringes of a forest in winter sparseness liven this picture with two grinning men standing in the foreground dressed in khaki pants and matching winter jackets. Their arms about one another's shoulders. That's a long... That is a long, complex sentence. I personally, as the editor in me, I would say that you should shorten that and make that two separate sentences. In the distance, a herd of deer can be seen clustered by a semi-frozen lake. The fact that some of the group's fawns seem to sport unnaturally coarse streaks of black hair and that you could swear at least one of them has a second set of eyes between their budding antlers seems to have gone unnoticed by the photo's previous owner, so implying that they are mutants, I guess. So, okay. Anything we want out of here? Not really. We don't need our dozenth uh, food place loyalty card. No good clothing that I want. The denim backpack, I don't know how big you actually are in terms of how much you can store. I guess I'll take a fully charged smartphone. Just why not have one for, I don't know, playing music or something back at base if we want it. Check these other bodies. And then the main thing here, I want to pop that crate. So we will, I think we have like a million lighters at this point as well. What does the flyer say? This is a somewhat weather-worn advertisement for the, quote, new FEMA evacuation shelters. Beneath the colorful photo, it reads, quote, familiarize yourself with your nearest emergency shelter. It could save your life. So I will, so I hate that I'm being like a grammar pain in the butt, but uh, if you're using single quotes here, it's not in dialogue, so it should be double quotes. And then I was thinking like maybe our conventions say that we use single quotes, but then you use double quotes later in the same entry. So both of these should be uniform would be my, my comment there. I shouldn't comment on those things. I don't know. That's like one of the very few things in life that I'm actually like qualified to make comments about, which would be writing stuff. Have a look here. Uh, military rucksack in pretty bad condition. Laptop computer. You know, 
I've been picking these up. I don't even know what I would do with them. I guess we'll just take the battery from it and we should grab some of these light batteries as well. I haven't been doing that. Mostly they've been very low in terms of how much they actually, like how much battery charge they have. So it hasn't been a big deal, but we should definitely grab batteries when we have the opportunity. Pop this crate. What do we got? Steel toe boots, not going to be any interest to me. I would love if we could just like look around really quick and see if we could spot that military zombie that we saw before. I think it was migrating west. Uh, we are running out of time. I really would like to defeat the soldier zombie to try and grab some ammo or even just like a backup Stanag mag or something. I don't know where it went. I suppose we should be looking in the vehicle because we move faster in the vehicle. And we'll do like one quick swipe around to see if we can find it, but otherwise we're just gonna move on to that horde and try to defeat the horde before we have to get going. Oh, the vehicle didn't start. Start the vehicle, start the vehicle, there we go. So let's just like swing over here. I, you wouldn't think it would have moved off too far? Did I misread a name or something? Okay, we have one warp pulse left. So here's the thing, I don't remember for sure that this will give us an extra warp pulse if we defeat the horde. Well, no, because we can exist past... Oh, I don't know. We can exist past the deadline, but only like two, right? Because we do the short expeditions now. If it's a longer expedition, we get more that we can survive past the warp time timer thing. And at our current rate, I think we can only live through like two more. I think we have time to do this, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to quick save because if we head down there and then we don't get an extra warp uh, pulse for killing them, we might have to load our save and just head back to be safe. That is safe scumming. People do hate that. I just, it would be terrible to lose a run because I don't understand the mechanics yet. Would be very like, it would just make me sad to have that happen. Yeah, it's not far away. We can definitely drive there and like 15 minutes. I think we'll just do the horde. God, I should save just for backup. We're gonna save, you know, I know people hate the save scumming aspect, but I would rather, if I'm gonna lose a run because I made a bad decision, that doesn't bother me at all. But if I'm gonna lose it because I don't understand the mechanics, that part does bother me. So I, I would wanna check that. All right, I mean, I guess we'll go over there. Maybe we can pick up the driving speed a little bit and try to save ourselves a little time here. So I guess we have to defeat the entirety of the horde. Let's just crank up the speed. Weight of the road roller. I mean, it looks like we can get up to like 35. Oh, we lost the conduct residential speed limit. Yeah, I always drive slow, uh, but with Sky Island, time actually matters. So I've been driving a lot faster or trying to. I, I know a lot of times I just end up not driving faster. There goes a raccoon. Okay, so we're seeing the horde. I don't know what horde means in this context, like quote unquote horde sort of implies a big group. And we wanna make sure we get all of them. So let's have a look. Good Lord, it looks like there's like 15 of them and probably more that we haven't seen yet, including some dogs. Dogs shouldn't be an issue as long as we're in the road roller. I guess this is that feral mechanic. There is a dead body here. As long as they all come to us and not like chasing that raccoon, I think we should be able to defeat them all with the road roller. There's really no reason we can't. It's a great vehicle that we can use the front or back end to hit enemies with, things like that. So it really just depends, like are there trees over here? I didn't even look at the terrain, so it looks mostly clear, so I don't see why we wouldn't be able to. So let's just plow into the horde, trying to go as fast as possible. Knocking them down. Oh, it's fully destroying their corpses. That's interesting because the ones we hit at the barricade weren't destroyed. Maybe it's a speed thing. We're going too fast. In fact, it left some items behind. It just obliterated the corpses. So in my mind, that means we hit them so hard they exploded into chunks of gore is, is how I'm going to perceive that, which I'm sure is not correct, but that's that's what I'm going with here. No idea what the turning radius on this is. Pretty terrible. Marked grabs my torch. Did I not close my doors? Oh, come on, man. Drop your backpack. Oh, God. If I drop this and it falls through the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, so this is really a terrible situation. I thought I had closed my doors. But this is um uh, an issue. If you've watched my old Let's Plays, this comes up in every run where I make this mistake. 
So we're gonna try to slow down here and batter this thing in melee. It's really not great. We took a lot of damage on our arm for no reason, just because of my own stupidity. So let's stop, let's um, smash this body. Cause we might as well loot it while we have the opportunity because we know it wasn't destroyed like the other ones will be. Another photograph, let's have a look. Sunshine blazes down upon the bustling boulevard or market street that this photo captures with large buildings checked out in South American architecture rising into a brilliantly blue sky and small kiosks dotted along the roadway. Standing by one such stall is a smiling preteen girl dressed in warm weather apparel and most absolutely massive Panama hat you've ever seen. The piece sitting upon her like a or her crown like a small umbrella. Entwined about her lean body are a pair of snakes, their heads covering, hovering by the girl, I cannot read internet, hovering by the girl's collarbone and their fat bodies cocooning her down to the tops of her thighs. This feels almost like a reference to something because it's like a very distinct image, but maybe the person who wrote it just had a very like distinct image in their mind. Let's take the cash card. We will take the industrial ID card. Someone said, I think that's only for, uh, what's that building? Is it the hazardous waste place? I think maybe is like the only place this is used, but we'll take it. And then we should wear our backpack and we should absolutely close this door. I cannot believe I left my door open. I've been so, it took me a long time to train that out of me because I used to always drive with my doors and trunks open. And then we, you know, for many years would bump into this issue. And I thought I had sort of trained myself to stop doing that, but apparently not. This road roller, sort of incredible. Love the amount of damage it does when I'm actually going at speed. Looks like we only clipped that mechanic, which is good because we don't want to destroy everything fully destroyed a rock yep and then let's see let's not go too fast i don't want to run over the corpse again great so let's stop we'll back it up here and then we'll take a look at these bodies so is that the mission complete it's done they're all dead warp shards filter in from seams in reality your reward rains down on you your body shivers slightly as a warp pulse passes through it another pulse will hit in 15 minutes warp sickness won't set in for two pulses so it did in fact give us that extra pulse which is really great i'm glad that that happened i thought that was the case but i i didn't want to end up dying because we didn't understand the mechanics so let's pop out here let's start uh looting what we can if there's anything here that's worth looting i was gonna say probably not but i bet it's just the standard zombie loot that we would normally get here anyway messenger bag uh, combat boots okay not really anything i want check this pile of stuff uh smartphone etc no take the electronic scrap like i said we want to raise electronics at some point would be nice okay the mechanic has quite a lot of tools on it uh adjustable wrench always good hacksaw i think we have one but i'm gonna take another one because i you know it's not the most common thing in the world we know we have hammers we'll take a metal file set uh, screwdriver set again always nice to have a few extra it would be nice if we could just pick up the toolbox and take all of it with us but we are very limited in space at the moment some chocolate bars sure chocolate has a decent amount of calories check the wallet uh, silver gas discount card i think we need the platinum one but we'll you know grab that anyway because i don't know for sure nothing there another photograph what do we got this time beaming up the camera with a two wide grin that all but screams my feet are killing me please make this stop a little girl stands against the backdrop of dense jungle foliage which you hope is only the work of a green screen dressed in all white with a bow tie and appropriately small vest and alabaster ballet shoes the child is holding a bouquet of partly wilted red and white roses and presenting it to the camera the photo has clearly been clumsily edited in post to blot out any perceived imperfections and add a radiant glow to the child's otherwise sallow skin okay sure so we'll take that stuff Check the next body. USB drive, I guess we'll take uh, nothing else that I want here. Grab the copper wire, always nice to have. Ooh, neoprene, arm sleeves in pretty poor condition, however. Uh, if we have space for that, it is nice to pick up a little extra neoprene when you see it, because it can be used uh, to craft some things, and neoprene's not like, I mean, it's not great, but it's not like the worst material in the world. Nothing there. You know what? We should be pulping these in case we ever have to come back down through this area. How long does it take to pulp is the question. So if I look up 144415, so it takes two seconds to pulp. That's insanity. Obviously in real life, it would take much longer than that to pulp a body, but sure, we'll take it. 
Another USB drive. Uh, do we want to read the flyer? I just don't think we care very much. Great antler bar and grill closing forever. Yeah, I'm good. That's what you get for having a brick and mortar store in the two, you know, 2020s, but okay. Smartphone, matchbook, stylish wallet. Still looking for that. Uh, nope, more silver gas <laughs> discount cards. Another photo. I don't know if people want me to read these or not. I like reading them, so. Rather aged Polaroid photo creased from having spent years being folded and unfolded in succession. Smiling young man dressed in an olive drab flight suit uh, stands in the foreground framed by the open doorway of a UH-1 Huey helicopter. A gloved hand gripping the door, a flight helmet and pushed up aviator's goggles perched upon his head and a jaunty thumbs up directed towards the camera. In shaky handwriting, the back of the picture is marked with the caption September 10th, 1967. In smaller script, someone has written, still missing in action, may you fly on in our hearts. Very sad. Uh, I'm not going to steal people's photographs of personal memories. Seems pretty terrible. I guess we'll take another cash card. We have about a million cash cards. They can be used for fletching. So like if we ever did want to craft raise our fabrication, we could make some crappy arrows probably. What's this scrap? Scrap metal we don't want. Uh, if it was like scrap electronics, we would take that. But So let's uh, head up to extract, I guess. Did we search you? We sure did. So are our warp shards spawned on our person or did they drop on the ground? Because if they dropped on the ground, they'd be destroyed. No, they're, they're here. So we got four warp shards. Not the most amazing uh, amount in the world, but hey, it's something. And actually, we probably should call the episode here. So what I think we're going to do in the next episode, we're going to swing up here, try to fold those cardboard boxes or maybe carry one in our hands. My general thinking was that if we fold one, it will fit inside of the other one. And then maybe we can fit the dory in there as well so we could carry that box in our hands and use that to go back. And again, super apologies. I'm sure I probably got many comments about people telling me I can fold them, which I haven't seen yet because I recorded those episodes yesterday and they don't go up until tomorrow so so for now everyone thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video i of course will be back in the near future with more content and i'll see you next time